So uh, today we will uh, go from the dorsum. So, dorsum. Frequency response model. Hopefully we will do more than half of it. That fits the derivation. <coughs> This is uh, 1935. So uh, just let's recap what are the tools available to us. So it doesn't assume potential flow. We have uh, Naplas squared phi equals zero, Naplas squared epsi equals zero, which yield to Naplas squared f equals zero, where f is phi plus i epsi. Right? Please, if you have any questions, stop me, okay? So we solve this uh, equation, sometimes we solve it directly in our domain and uh, sometimes we invoke, uh, we solve it from the cylinder domain and we invoke a conformal mapping kind of thing. So uh, this is what Tudorso did, he, he solved it in the cylinder domain. So he made use of the conformal mapping, so I'm going to recall here that we have a mapping that map you from this guy to that guy, B negative B, so this would be B over 2, and the mapping function, you have here X and Y, this is Z, which is X plus I, Y, and here is the zeta domain, so you have a mapping, Z is zeta plus the radius squared over Z, right? And I'm also reminding you that last time we derived an equation, so uh, in this mapping, this is for any any point, any point in the domain. So in particular, on the plate, the x is related to theta of the cylinder, right? So in the plate, we have y equals 0. This is corresponding to, on the cylinder, we have the radius, it's B over 2, right? So we have only one coordinate to uh, describe points on the plate. This is the X. We have only one coordinate to describe points on the cylinder. This is theta, and the relation between them is simply X equal B equals I theta. And if you have a question, like I said, please stop me. We are doing to do some revision in detail. We're just recalling things from before, we did not starting any new thing today yet. I'm reminding you that last time we derived the relation between u and v on the plate and vr and v theta on the cylinder. So uh, u was equal to negative v theta, the tangential is related to the tangential, the radial or the normal is related to the normal. Okay? divided by just two side theta. Any question, please stop me. So we have potential flow, we have this partial differential equation, it's linear. Sometimes we can use conformal mapping to solve over the cylinder instead of solving in my domain. But instead we're solving this linear differential equation, the Laplacian, Laplace squared equals zero. And when you, whenever you have a differential equation, you need boundary condition. Right? So uh, we typically solve this differential equation subject to what? Subject to what? What's the boundary condition? No boundary. Yeah. No penetration. Yeah. Remember the, I mean, if you have a differential equation and solve it due to some boundary condition, if you change the boundary condition, the solution will completely change. So. Uh, we cannot say we want to solve this. This by itself is not sufficient at all. We have to specify boundary condition. 
So the main boundary condition that we have, we must satisfy is the no penetration boundary condition, okay? Okay, so we solved the Laplacian subject to a no penetration boundary condition. What else do we need to satisfy? Anything else you need to satisfy? Tchaikovsky. Uh, the trailing. The, the what? The Tchaikovsky. Uh, yeah, the, the contact condition. Yes. If you don't account for the contact condition, you will not have a lifting mechanism with potential flow. You will get no lift. Okay? Anything else that we need to make sure of? Anything else? Conservation of circulation, right? So these four statements, they are sufficient to result in your velocity field. You get phi, and from phi you get your velocity field. And then whenever you get the velocity field, how you proceed further, how you get the pressure? <coughs> how you get the pressure? Hmm. Bernoulli. So last time we derived the unsteady Bernoulli. which is, you remember, P plus one half rho U squared. This is your unsteady Bernoulli should equal constant. For unsteady flow, you just add rho partial phi partial T to it. This is equal constant. It's constant independent of space, or maybe dependent of time. And we also derived the linearized version of it. The linearized version was P minus P infinity, assuming P infinity at, in the free stream. This was negative rho U phi x plus phi t. From which we also derived an equation for the lift force. The two-dimensional lift force, last time we did this, it was 2 be a rho. So uh, we have an integral from negative b to b over the plate, partial phi, partial t on the upper surface, dx plus u infinity, phi trailing edge minus phi leading edge. And we said that we have the freedom to choose phi at one point, so we choose phi leading edge to be zero. Okay? So uh, this is our framework. You can see it here. We solve this partial differential equation subject to no boundary condition. This is not sufficient to get any lift by itself. <coughs> so we apply the contact condition. It's the sole lifting mechanism. The sole mechanism in potential flow that can induce lift, that can generate lift. And when we do that, when we do this formulation, we need to make sure that there is conservation of circulation. The first statement, the partial differential equation itself, we we solve it in a very easy way. How? By just adding singularities that individually satisfy the differential equation. If you put source, sink, vortex, and so and so, and they all naturally satisfy n plus square phi equals zero, so we take care of the first statement. So we don't really go and solve the, the differential equation. We add singularity, we impose singularities in the flow with unknown strength that they naturally satisfy the differential equation. So the first statement is always taken care of. But then we use this guy to determine this unknown strength. And we need to make sure that the contact condition is satisfied, or in other words, utilize the contact condition to get the value of our circulation, make sure that the conservation of circulation is satisfied. After we solve the problem, we can go and get the lift. And you can see that the lift is dependent only on phi. Okay. This is what we had last time. We said, okay, we need we need phi on the upper surface. 
Then we derived an expression for phi, very easy expression because phi is uh, the middle in the x direction, you know, is partial phi partial x. So you can get phi out of that. So we derived, we said phi at any x minus phi at the leading edge is the integration from the leading edge to x partial phi partial x dx, right? This is what we said, and this is u. And like we said here, u is related to the tangential velocity through this equation. So last time, we got phi at any theta on the upper surface of the cylinder to be the integration from theta to phi v theta of any angle d phi. And we have a factor outside, negative b over 2. Okay, so we said now we need the V theta. So you need the V theta. Anything so far is, is very general. We did, not, I did not, we did not specify anything. So starting from potential flow, we did not specify anything. These are all generic relations. Dynasty Bernoulli is generic. We just here linearized about the infinity solution. This is a very general relation of phi on the cylinder in terms of v theta, the tangential velocity, any, anything is generic. Now we're going to specify a little bit, in particular to Tudorson's problem. So any, any question? So here is the hierarchy. We need the lift. For the lift, we need phi on the upper surface velocity potential. We just wrote phi on the upper surface in terms of the tangential velocity in the cylinder. So just give me v theta, I'm done. Okay? If you give me v theta, I'm done. What problem we're trying to solve? We're trying to solve this problem. What Tudorson was trying to solve this problem. You have here is the plate. Here is at some point in the plate. The plate is oscillating pitch up and down by a velocity alpha dot going up and down, plunging h dot. So this is pitch, pitching, plunging. Problem. And it's also moving with some u. So this is angle of attack alpha. Okay? So we're doing oscillation, pitch plunge. So I need the lift. The lift will be a value or, or, or will be what? Will be just a number? Five or two? Or will be what? What do you expect to get from the lift? What do you expect to get from the lift? What do you expect to get from the left? Is it a number or what? So you have this problem. You have an airfoil that is oscillatory. What do you expect to get from the left? Some function. Yeah, a function of time, right? We need the left as a function of time. Okay. So Tidorsu uh, will solve the problem and give you the left as a function of time, but. If it's a function of time, sin omega t equals sin omega t is not that helpful. We need the lift in terms of the airfoil motion, right? In terms of the input, the output, in terms of the output. So uh, we just said that in order to get the lift, we need the tangential velocity. So now we need the tangential velocity in the cylinder in terms of the airfoil motion, okay? Any question about that? Uh, yes, Larry? What's the vector pointing like? What is? Yeah, is it h dot? Yeah, h dot. What is h dot? Is the plunging displacement up and down. Oh. So h dot is the velocity. Okay. Any question, please? Okay. So what caused the pitching and the plunging? This is your input. So for for aerodynamics, for aerodynamics, what is the input and what's the output? For an air for aerodynamic problem. Okay, I know. The that input that. is the airfoil motion. So this is given. This is arbitrarily given. And the output is the left. I need to determine the left, given the airfoil motion. Well, in reality, in reality, this airfoil motion may come from uh, structural deflection. So it may come from another discipline, structure. Okay. It may come from a dynamics problem, and you solve the combined. But for an aerodynamicist, I don't care where it, where it 
where it came from, right? This is my input, so it's arbitrarily given, and I need to give you the output for this particular input. Any question? Okay, so in order to solve, like I said, please notice this, up to anything before this point, this is general. Now, here is the Dorson frequency response model. In order to solve this problem, he had this formulation. We know that the, how the lift is generated, the lift is mainly due to what? Steady lift is mainly due to what? Come on, guys, steady lift is mainly due to what? Circulation. So steady lift is mainly circulatory due to circulation. Turns out that in unsteady flow, you can have lift without net circulation, and we call it non circulatory. Okay? So to do so, divided the problem into non circulatory contributions and circulatory contributions. Hopefully, today we will finish the non circulatory. So We'll just postpone this next time. This is not a unique way of doing it. You can have both loads combined together as the total the net lift. But I like this decoupling because we can have some physics out of this decoupling. This is the way he did it. So let's focus on the non-circulatory lift. Non-circulatory lift that we know from the beginning that there is no net circulation. There is no net circulation. And for sure, because there is no net circulation, you don't need to satisfy the total condition here, right? The total condition is just responsible for the generation of circulation. Okay? Okay, we, we will need it later. <clears throat> but let's solve this only, non-circulatory. So uh, we don't have any circulation, neither on the plate nor in the weight. So here is my cylinder, or here is your plate. And on the plate, I don't have, unlike the linear fault theory, where we have a distribution of circulations, now just pick your, pick another poison. Let's just ignore the circulations. Okay, let's have any other singularities. So, uh, I mean, the straightforward singularity is to add sources and sinks. Okay, so a source distribution of the upper surface. But remember, this will be related to a cylinder and both they are closed sections whenever you have a closed section closed body the summation of sources and things they must go to zero <coughs> so uh, if you put sources in the upper surface it's good if you put things with the same strength on the lower surface